One of the things that I, I, I thought about is the unanimity, and I thought that that would be something that should be celebrated. I always thought it was something that was ridiculous and should not have been, and I think that sometimes, and you all know that I'm a writer at heart, the writers are a little bit too self-important, and they're the gatekeepers to this museum. A in a way, that's good. They just, they, they take their job very seriously. Some take themselves a little bit too seriously, and people that were certainly um, worthy were kept out of the Hall of Unanimity. And uh, the only one who's ever done it now is Mariano Rivera. And if you don't think it matters, there's a video that's out that was shot when Jack O'Connell, president of the Baseball Writers Association of America, he has one of the greatest jobs in the world. He gets to call the people that make the Hall of Fame. Yeah. He doesn't call the people that don't make it. He gets to call the people and tell them, I mean, so you're always bringing good news. And when, you know, first he said, you've made the Hall of Fame, and the family was all happy, and they hugged Mo. And then he said, I also want to tell you that you're the first, and they knew exactly what was coming next, and the place exploded. So it meant something, especially there are a lot of Hall of Famers. There's only one first-time guy who got in without anybody not saying no, and it's Mariano Rivera. And I think it should happen a long time ago. It should happen with Seaver. It should happen with Ruth. It should happen with DiMaggio. It should happen with Williams. It should happen with Mays. It should have happened with Aaron. But it's Mariano Rivera, and I'm glad that he gets to enjoy it. Just to look at his face, yes, he's showing it right now. Just beaming from ear to ear how happy he was his sons, high-fiving him and each other. Right. So it meant a lot. The unanimity aspect meant a lot. Now, there are circumstances why that the Ted Williams or Ken Griffey Juniors or Tom Seavers didn't get 100%. As you mentioned in the soft open, there are guys that want someone that may not get enough votes, and they only get 10 votes, and they got their nine, and they say, well, Ted Williams is going to get in anyway, so I won't use my vote on him. I'll use it on somebody else. So it's the system that's convoluted. Plus, you used to have guys back in the day, and I guess they don't exist anymore, all because Joe DiMaggio didn't go on on the first ballot. I will never vote for anyone on the first ballot. Right. It looks like most of those guys are now gone. Or I'm not going to vote for a closer because it's not a real position. I'm not going to vote for a DH because it's not a real position. I think the writers have kind of grown up. And it's the system that has stopped these guys. So to suggest that Mo Rivera is the greatest player in the history of baseball, and that's why he's 100%, that he's somehow better than Ken Griffey Jr., Ted Williams, Tom Seaver, you shouldn't look at it that way. It's just circumstances. Because I don't think Tom Seaver was the greatest pitcher of all time, and I don't think that Ken Griffey Jr. was the best everyday player of all time. For them to have the highest percentage of votes, I do believe that Mariano Rivera is the greatest closer of all time, but does he deserve the 100% when there are a lot of other players that you probably would, that you would take over him as being better it, for the game? I mean, Ted Williams is one of the greatest hitters of all time. Willie Mays is one of the greatest all-around players of all time. How do they not have 100%? But I don't think it, it's a reflection on the quality of players. It's a reflection on the system. It is a reflection on the system, and the system is broken in, in a sense. Uh, first of all, I, I don't believe that you should be voting the best ever at this position. It's the Hall of Fame. Whether you're, or not you're worthy of the Hall of Fame, I never understood why some people could vote for somebody one year and not another. And then I got deeper into the thought process of the rule of ten. So you can only vote for ten people on the ballot. And I was listening to Buster Only today, uh, talking uh, with Humpty Canty and Rothy, and he said, I stopped voting because of the rule of ten. He said, I voted for 10 people. There were seven more that I felt were Hall of Fame worthy, and I left them off, like Mike Messina and Tim Raines. He goes, and I thought afterward, that's just wrong. Just because there's a lot of guys on the ballot doesn't mean I should leave people off. You're either a Hall of Famer or you're not. There shouldn't be degrees of it. And until there's a degree level in the Hall of Fame where, okay, this Hall is for the really good. This is Hall is for the all-time great. This Hall is for the people I got in um, unanimously. There's not. You're either a Hall of Famer or you're not. And Tom Seaver is one of the greatest pitchers of all time. And Ken Griffey Jr. is one of the greatest players of all time. And Mariano Rivera is the greatest closer of all time. So I don't think that that's why he got the unanimous vote. I really believe just his gentle nature and soul combined with the fact that he was one of the... I mean, he was just unbelievable on the mound. He didn't rub anybody the wrong way. He never blew anybody off. He never felt... Like he was better than you because he was Mariano Rivera. And I think that sometimes, although they try not to, writers do let their personal feelings creep in. Because I'm sorry, whatever you might think of Kurt Schilling, he's a Hall of Fame pitcher. Right. And only 61% of the voting block gave him their vote. Why? You can't look at his numbers and say he's not a Hall of Famer. You're looking at other things as well. And I think that's why he didn't get in. And I think the fact that Mariano Rivera 
is such a like a top of the line guy. There's no one that wanted that stain on and their reputation. I spent a lot of time being upset last night for Schilling. Did you? Yeah, I laid up at night. I thought about it. I went, a good man not getting what he deserves. This is wrong. This is wrong. And then I fell asleep. But, in all seriousness, if there's full disclosure on the voting... And there should be, and there's right, not. The three people that didn't vote for Ken Griffey Jr., I want to know your reason. All right? And if it's because I didn't like the fact that he wore his cap backwards, or I don't like the fact that he blew me off for an interview back in the day when he was traded to the Reds, or I didn't like his dad, or I don't vote for guys on the first ballot. You know what? We're taking your vote away. That's not a good enough reason. If you can convince me baseball-wise why he's not a first ballot Hall of Famer, if you have that ability, then good luck. Then you can keep your vote. But if you didn't vote for Kurt Schilling because you don't like the, his politics, I don't think that's a good enough reason. Well, how about the people that vote for people because they're buddies and they are not Hall I don't, of Famers? I, listen, that, that, we had it, and we're, we'll have Joe Torre on again today. I, honestly... Now, he, I, we don't know if he voted for, for um, Harold Baines or not. We know he voted for Lee Smith because Lee Smith got in on all 16 votes right. for, the, for the Veterans Committee. But I didn't like, I didn't like the reason. Well, you know, he was, he's a darn good player. Darn good player does not mean that you're a Hall of Famer. And darn good is not you know, um, but And you can't do these things in a vacuum either. When you put Lee Smith in, Michael, that opens the door for a lot of other closers. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing happens with, uh, with Messina. You know, is he a Hall of Famer? Yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. Is he a borderline Hall of Famer? Yes, I believe he is a borderline Hall of Famer. But if Mike Messina's in, how's Kurt Schilling not in? How's Andy Pettit only get 9% of the vote? Now, you could, you could put the PED angle there. David Cohn was off the ballot in one year because he got under 5%, which I think is a joke. Here's the thing I asked Stephen A. Smith on his show. Your life depended on it. Who you want starting the game? Schilling, Cohn, Pettit? Or Messina. I'd say Messina's fourth. Yeah, probably. Right? I mean, Kurt Schilling is one of the great postseason pitchers of all time. Politics aside, how do you ignore that?